I'm super excited about today. I've been testing the Mistral Small 24 billion Instruct 2501 model. That is a mouthful. And initially I was very unimpressed with the results, but I'm gonna be honest with you. I made a fatal flaw and I'm guessing some of you guys do this as well. I loaded it into LM Studio. I started firing away and I was unimpressed. Didn't do what I wanted to on code. Turns out LM Studio defaults to a 0 0.8 temperature setting. So the, the purpose of this video is to talk about how temperature matters and also show how good the Mistral Small 24 billion instruct is at coding. Let's jump into it. So this is the Mistral Small 24 billion parameter instruct 2501 model. It's released a few days ago. You can kind of see that from the chart. One of the things I missed when uh, reading this documentation is they recommend a relatively low temperature, such as temperature 0 0.15. And in LM Studio, it was defaulting 0 0.8. What triggered me to go dig into this was I saw this post a few hours ago on the uh, subreddit for our local llama. And this person claims that it's simply the best model ever made. And I was actually reading through here and there were a lot of people saying like very positive things about this particular model. But I had kind of written it off right away because my initial tests weren't good. So I just want to reiterate, it is so important for us to remember to check the recommended temperature setting. And what I'm going to show you here is my model competition. This is the website that I made that I run locally that allows me to do side by side comparisons with the same prompt on two different models. I've updated it so that it can also do it on the same model, but with different temperature inputs. And what we're going to do is we're going to take and actually run this to determine how the 0 0.8 temperature output compares to the 0 0.1 temperature output. So first off, the first one that we want to do is implement a fully functioning maze solver application that uses the breadth first search to find the shortest path in a maze. All right, the first one that we are going to run is going to be the 0 0.8 temperature question. So let's go ahead and run question one here. It opens and closes right away. So let me see what happens if I don't quit. Just out of curiosity, I want to see what the screen looks like. Well, that's super unfortunate. I was hoping that it would actually show us something there that was kind of useful. Uh, anyway, let's take a look at what the 0 0.1 temperature model, the version of this actually did. We have 85 lines, so it seems significantly less, which is kind of interesting. Oh my gosh, check this out. So it is trying. You can see the animation of it searching. Think about this. The 0 0.1 model worked right away. And look, it looks like it finally crashed. But that is so much closer than the 0 0.8 model. Just absolutely phenomenal. All right, so on to question two. This one is the May solver with the A star search algorithm. So I say develop a complete application that solves a maze using the A star search algorithm. The program should begin with a hard coded 2D array maze and provide a visual display of the grid. During execution, the application must animate the exploration process with a heuristic like the Manhattan distance and highlight the final optimal path. So let's go ahead and jump over to testing. Okay, so this is the 0 0.8 weight one. That one crashed. We ended up getting some sort of, looks like maybe index or something not valid there. That's unfortunate. Okay, so now this is the 0 0.1 one. Whoa! I'm sorry, that window wasn't over there. Let me, let me try that again to get it on the right window. I had to switch back to this window because the window keeps opening over here. Check that out. That is wicked cool. That worked out the gate. Perfectly found the path through it. So again, this is another win for the 0 0.1 weight one. So question three, Sudoku solver with interactive UI. Create a fully operational Sudoku solver that not, that not only uses a puzzle using backtracking, but also provides a graphical interface for users to input puzzles and view the solution. The application should, should start with a default unsolved Sudoku grid and allows users to modify or input their own values. I will say in all the times I've ran this, I've never had anyone allow me to input my own puzzle. So we'll see what ends up happening. Let's jump over to testing. All right, we are going to run the 0 0.1 temperature model right now, or the answer right now. Whoa, okay, I'm moving it over. So now we have a Sudoku board. I can put in my own number. What does that do? If I hit solve, what happens? What? What? That's crazy. I wonder if there's a way to like clear it. I don't think so. No, I'm not. I'm hitting all the keys, nothing. Okay, that is a huge, huge win for the 0.11. One. 
Um, wait, I'm, I'm calling it a win before I even test the second one. That's wrong. That is a huge W, but we haven't seen if the 0.8 is any better yet. So run this one. Okay, this actually also has a Sudoku solver. Uh, can I put numbers in there? So put four in there. Put one in there. I want to see what happens. Okay, so I did change it to a six, so I fixed it. Okay, I think this is probably a tie. Now, on to the next game. We are going to be building a Connect 4 game with AI and a graphical interface. Build a complete Connect 4 game where a human player competes against an AI. The application should include a fully interactive graphical interface where users can click to drop pieces. The AI should make moves using a basic heuristic or a mini-max algorithm with the game updating the board after each turn. Let's jump over to testing what the results are here. Okay, this is the 0.1 temperature one. Oh, no way. Oh, it crashed. Oh, random isn't defined. Why is random not defined? No. That can't be the only thing it missed. Let's try this again. Okay. Uh, not great, but it did, it did do a decent job, to be honest. It doesn't have the logic of it dropping down. This is better than what I anticipated, but it's unfortunate it doesn't drop down. I don't think the AI is actually... I guess it is playing with me, kind of. Fascinating. All right, let's test the 0 0.8 version. The 0 0.8 version unfortunately crashes with cannot access local variable event where it is not associated with a value. So that is on line 183. And where do we see that event here? Dang, that's unfortunate. All right, I gave it a little bit to see if I could actually just change a few things to get it working. I cannot. So unfortunately, what we're going to do is we're going to mark 0 0.1 as the winner. But honestly, neither one was perfect here. I was still very impressed with what 0.1 came up with, though. It had a nice visual representation. I could actually move it left and right with the mouse, but it didn't actually have the fall physics in there. Okay, the next one, tic-tac-toe game with Minimax AI and UI, so GUI. Implement a complete tic-tac-toe game with a graphical user interface. The game should allow a user to play against a computer with the AI using the Minimax algorithm to choose optimal moves. The UI should update after each move, showing the current state of the game. Let's jump over to testing. First up is the 0 0.1 temperature version. Let's see if it works out the gate. Here is my tic-tac-toe board. I am going to click to see what happens. All right, I put my X there. Does it gonna stop me? I win, yay! Let's try it again. I do. So it did block me there, but it's not blocking me here. Interesting. Cool, okay, so we got a function tic-tac-toe game. I'm going to set up the 0 0.8 version now. This one also loads up properly. Uh, let's see, kind of like the way this one looks a little bit better. The AI felt a little better this time. Let me try that again. Let me try it just like straight up. Yeah, it's blocking me like every time. I feel like the AI is just better on the 0 0.8 version. I don't think I can actually beat it, to be honest with you. Yeah, it's definitely blocking me. Okay, cool. So I'm actually going to give this one to the 0 0.8 version. I think the... Both are great. I mean, both are functional, but the AI is clearly better on the 0 0.8 temperature one. Next up, we have a snake game with Pygame. Develop the classic snake game as a fully functioning application using Pygame. The game should feature smooth movement, food generation, collision detection, a scoring system, and increasing difficulty. A graphical interface should display the game in real time. All right, first up is the 0 0.1 temperature one. Let's see what we get. We have a... Game of Snake, I think. Yep, it's actually working. Can you believe, though, that I'm actually able to make this with a 24 billion parameter model? You know, I see people testing this with, like, the big, big frontier models. I'm curious uh, how the game ending stuff will work. Ah. I don't know. Oh, yeah, I turned back in on myself. So what I did there is I was moving left and I hit the right arrow to actually, to actually uh, move like back right, but it moved into myself. So there I hit the edge, so that worked. So hitting myself works. I did not see like increasing difficulty. I'm guessing... Very cool. All right, I'm gonna say that's a very functioning snake game for 0 0.1. Let's set up 0 0.8 and see how that does. 
So this is 0 0.8. I still move well. Good. Okay, a little bit different like display there, but it did let me play again. I want to get myself a little bit longer. Yep, turning back in on myself also caused me to die. I just can't believe we're able to do this stuff in like local models now. If you'd have told me this was possible a year ago, I don't know if I'd have believed anybody. This is absolutely insane. Like running on a relatively reasonable size computer. All right, and then, yeah, I like this. That's great. We're basically going to call this one a tie. Both of them are functioning. I was surprised by that, to be honest with you. I thought the 0.1 one was going to be better. Next, we have a rule-based chatbot with the UI. Create a fully functional rule-based chatbot application that interacts with the user through a graphical interface. The chatbot should use a set of predefined rules and patterns to generate responses and display a conversation history. Let's go over to testing. All right, first up is the 0.1 temperature version. Let's take a look what we got. We have our chatbot. This is pretty cool. I'm just going to say hi and see what happens. Hi, I'm not sure how to respond to that. Uh, can you help me? What is your name? Well, I'm not very impressed with this one at all. I don't think it really does anything. So we got the chatbot. I guess, let me try something else. Let me try putting hello in there. Okay, I see what it's doing. I see it here now. How are you? Bye. So basically it only has those four different responses. Okay, let's test the 0 0.8 version. Okay, so I'm running, so we're running it now. We've got a very similar looking chatbot. Unfortunately, it has the same problem. But you know, the one thing I see here is that this one also supports high. So if I do hi, apparently I have to hit send, I can't enter on this one. How can I help you? Apparently ask, how are you? And then I can say bye. Otherwise it's just going to return. I'm not sure what's wrong with that. It's very similar. I think I would probably put this as a tie as well. Uh, unfortunately, neither one of them is great. I was hoping it would put a little bit more logic in there to actually give it a little bit more flavor. But I think uh, this is fine, I think, for both of these. Voting for a tie here. Now the score currently is temperature 0.1 has four votes, 0.8 has zero votes with three ties. And we are down to our last three questions. This one's gonna be a little bit trickier. I'm not sure if they're gonna be able to pull it off, but this is a neur neural network for the XOR problem with visualization. Con construct a complete application that builds and trains a simple neural network from scratch with high level libraries to solve the XOR problem. The program should include a visual representation of the training process, such as plotting the loss over iterations or displaying decision boundaries. Both of their outputs look like everything completed properly. I'm super curious what this is going to do. Okay, so now I'm testing the 0 0.1 temperature version of the XR problem. And this diagram is completely wrong, which is very unfortunate. But the reason it's wrong is this is showing like there's a linear decision boundary here, which is not true. So you should see a bunch more curves and things like that. Um, so this is a fail in the decision boundary XOR problem in particular for how this one is done. Okay, so this is the 0 0.8 weighted version here. And this is accurate. Surprisingly, the 0 0.8 version did a better job at diagramming this out. And the reason for it is that you wouldn't have a linear, you wouldn't have the linear lines like we did in the 0 0.1 temperature version. Uh, reading this, I'm guessing the purple version is most likely outputting zero here. You can kind of see the, the kind of gradient into one across here. So you can kind of see the, as you get closer to the purple here, you get more blur between like yellow and purple. It's fantastic here. Now I am curious, how did, so it did actually train the neural network with uh, 10,000 epochs. Really, really, really cool. I'm very excited about that, but also very surprised that the 0.8 version actually did it better. This is a, the first clear win for the 0.8 version here. Now we're going to go over to the web scraper for a headline news with UI. The question here is develop an application that scrapes the latest news headlines from a chosen website and displays them in a graphical interface. The program should automatically fetch the data and update the UI with headlines and corresponding links. Okay, so I'm going to run the 0.1 temperature one. Interesting thing that it's actually using Y Combinator as the example URL. So that was interesting. Let's see what ends up happening here. So we have a Python app 
So I have a Python app, but it opens up this little window here. It doesn't seem to do anything if I hit refresh. So I'm not sure we're actually getting any particular result no matter what I do here. Unfortunately, I think that is a failure for the 0.1 temperature one. Let's try the 0.8 one. All right, this is the 0.8 one. I'm going to hit refresh. It also chose Y Combinator. I'm going to hit refresh headlines. And what did I get? I got an error here. It didn't find, like, it's looking for a class called story link. So that's unfortunate. There's no diagnosis. So this is kind of a failure on both parts. This one at least had a better UI, but I don't think we're going to give that credit. We're just going to mark that as a tie, unfortunately, both failing. The final question here is a distributed MapReduce prototype with visualization. We're going to design and implement a simplified distributed MapReduce framework in Python that processes data in parallel. The application should visually represent the division of tasks, processing by worker threads or processes, and the aggregation of results. For example, work count for multiple documents. And this one says this example will simulate a simple word count MapReduce task. What we're going to do now is jump over and test this in VS Code. And this is the 0.1 version. We did not get a graphical interface of any kind, but we did end up showing that workers were started and we got a final word count. Hello to world two. I'm not sure where that came from. It's probably, oh, here we go. Here's our data sample here. And then we've got our map reduce. That's super cool, actually. I'm sad that it didn't actually have a visual representation, but I mean, I, I can kind of count that a little bit, but I did say specifically visualization. And now this is the 0.8 version that we're running. We got a very similar result, word one, two, word two, three, and all tasks complete. So they started worker zero, and then worker zero finish, worker one finish. So the first one actually started more workers. The second one in 0.8 actually only started two workers. We ended up with a final result um, that's pretty similar between the two of them. I don't know, you could probably say this one's actually a tie as well. I do like the fact that we ended up with, actually no, four workers for the 0.1 temperature one. But we only ended up with two for the second one. I don't know, I think I'm just gonna give this a tie. I think it could go either way. I do think the 0.1 temperature one is favored slightly. All right, just for a little bit of fun at the end before I cut this off, I wanted to show what happens if I uh, set the temperature to. I accidentally have the 1.5 temperature in here. It's actually set to two. But you could kind of see here, it starts off decent and then just goes into gobbledygook. And I could sometimes get that to happen at temperatures like 1.5, 1.6, but I thought it'd be kind of fun to show like the crazy variant that you get with uh, high temperature amounts. So let me know your thoughts. Like this was actually very surprising to me. Um, I did realize as I got further into it that there was a bug I introduced the final score is three wins for the 0.1 temperature, two wins for the 0.8 temperature, and five ties. It's actually a lot closer than I anticipated, but sometimes I think the 0.1 just kind of blew it out of the water, and sometimes I think the 0.8 just did a better job for some reason. I don't really quite understand. Uh, but really, the thing is, is temperature matters a lot. Like, I think for me in particular, when you're looking at algorithmic things, the, zero, the lower temperature in this model works so much better. Uh, the first two examples were the breadth first search and that you start algorithm. Those were just nailed really well by the 0 0.1, where the 0 0.8 temperature actually failed outright, didn't didn't run. And then when you got to a little bit more creative things, uh, like the neural network or the chatbot, you started seeing 0 0.8 temperature actually working fairly well. It's fascinating to me. Anyway, I'd love to know your thoughts on this. I'm actually really liking this model. I want to see if I can actually get it working in root code or find a version of this that works in root code. Because if I could, I'd love to see how this actually interacts with my code base and determine if it's a model I could actually offload some of my tasks to to save some money on tokens throughout the day. Appreciate you all. If you like content like this, please like and subscribe. I've made a lot of improvements to this application. I know I did introduce some one bug, but I know one of the bits of feedback I got from the last one was that I should always try to run all the code to see if it's working. So it did make the video a bit longer. I'd love to know your feedback on that as well. Till next time, peace out.